Also something I don't think I've mentioned is if we don't have the phrase book when we're saving the village, we will not know what the guy is talking about. Oh wait. Stop, sentries. Let him pass. When I was chained in the castle dungeons, he set me free. Were it not for him, I would be dead. He is Eric, son of King Aaron. We must help him. So the wolf woman does in fact help us out instead of just kill us in this game. And if we hadn't saved her, we would have had to punch out the mushrooms. But now we don't even have to do that much. But yeah, if, what I just kind of wanted to mention was that if you don't have the phrase book, and you reach that not Italian guy, you pretty much have to guess what the thing he gives you is for. And that's not fun. But we got some beautiful butterflies in this forest. Clearly, there is nothing but good stuff to be found here. Well, apparently they thought they could make a lot of beautiful backgrounds here, because... Yeah, they do look fairly nice. Look kind of pastel and... Dissonant, though. I'm not big on art, but I can tell you that there's something a bit off about the... Dullness of the colour in these scenes. Because a lot of these screens are just nothing but walk from one end of the screen to another. But it doesn't matter now because we made it to Stonehenge. And if you recall, yeah. Yeah, Canon Stonehenge is a sundial, no, nothing else. So we do have these musical pipes that we were told to use to summon a spirit, so why not? Spirit we summon is this dude, who we have to talk to because he just swoops in and won't even acknowledge us until we speak to it. I am Iphicles, king of the fairies. I have been watching your progress for some time. What is it that you seek? I seek the evil Belazar and my sister, whom I believe he has taken captive. Ah, I can help you if you help me first. My daughter, Princess Alessandra, is also in great danger. A goblin shaman has captured her and holds her in his temple in the woods. I am powerless against the shaman. I need the help of a brave young mortal. I'll do what I can. Yep. So he pretty much commissions us to save his daughter. But let's punch him out instead. And see what happens, which is that. Such a peaceful frame. No, but what we have to do now, in fact, is... Is go all the way back to where the village entrance was. Because that's where her daughter is being held captive by the goblin priest guy. So I do hope you enjoy these backgrounds, because we're going to be seeing them for a little while longer. Along with the ambient sounds. Also, Eric cannot move any faster than this, so... So, that's something. Guess you're gonna pace yourself if you're gonna be walking around for days at a time. Yeah. Still going to the temple place. Still on my way there. Still trying to. Yep. A nice stroll in the world of Beyond Shadow Gate. Still wondering how this bridge is still up if it barely has any supports. Is there anything else? We've uh, 
I've neglected to mention. Might as well think of that now. The guy with the phrase book, I would explain that. The tiger, I punched him out. Well, we're almost there anyway. Yes, indeed. Here we are. Because this clearing in the woods, which was empty earlier, now contains... Hello, could you please go there? This. You dare interrupt my private ceremonies? You dare threaten the shaman? You will die a slow death, and the young Alessandra can watch! <laughs> okay. So what this guy does is... Well, we can look at him. A goblin shaman. And the goblin guy's daughter. A young and terrified... Not, not goblin guy, elf guy, right. Who just sits around. Apparently the goblin man's going to sacrifice her to Sethogwa there. And he hops around and... Yeah, that's pretty much all he does. And swings his sickle at us, sometimes. It only takes three swings to kill us though. So let's do this the cheap way and just stand at the bottom of the screen and... <laughs> yep, we can do this. Just punch the guy whenever he gets close. It takes us five punches, I think, to kill him, even though... <laughs> nice positioning there. Oh, well... Well, at least we don't have to walk all the way back. Yep, so now he will send us forward in our quest. That's awfully nice of him. With that stretchy effect. And even though this road might seem kind of familiar, we are not in the same place as before. We are now in a new place. We have the entry to a mountain there. But we will not be going there for a while. We will instead check out this place on the left here. It is... A mining building, apparently. The boiler building. We can go inside, but I don't think there's anything we can do here yet. Music though. Power plant and this big boiler. Which is now cold because it hasn't been used in a long time. We do have this thing on the uh, right here. A moisture free pile of coal, so of course let's take some coal with us. We will find a use for that at one point, but that point won't come for a while. We should go north here, I don't think there's anything that we can do here now. No, there is not. So, let us instead backtrack. Uh, if we go left here, we will eventually, I think, find ourselves in a familiar place. We got a winch house, we can, which we can never enter, by the way. I know what purpose it serves. And now we're in the woods. That's not a cavern ledge, that's a creature, yeah, there we go. Another prairie blizzard creature. I know there's something that we have to do on the left, or I forget what's on the right. Oh, it's this place, the Temple of Stuff. This temple has a name, but I forgot what it is already, but... Oh yeah, we can't do anything here yet either, because there's an item we need. So let's warp back to this place. And go to the left instead. Ouch. Huh? Yeah, this guy seems to, be, seems to be having a hard time. A disheveled viking with a ratty looking beard. Booze! Don't know where 
where they come from. Wish I had me some divorce for getting burrs out of me beard. Um, yeah, he's saying burrs, not bears, as you can might have heard. So, of course, what we do with this guy is give him the magical, apparently magical, beard comb. And for our trouble, we got this hammer. So, having no further use for this guy. Let us execute another one of our witnesses. And I think now that we have the hammer, we can uh, do stuff over the right hand. Examine this place, it is a stone temple, there we go. Again, it has a name, but I don't remember what it is. In which there is a gargoyle. Hmm. Which does that? Oh wait, I was doing something else there. Which doesn't let us climb the stairs, so... I can punch it all we want, but not much of a use punching stone. We do, however, have this. Wonderful magical hammer, so... So, that takes care of that guy. So, oh, wow, fancy stir climbing animation there. And that leaves us in this place. The image of a serpent guarding the pool. Some kind of presence there. Can we go into the pool? Nope. However, we, however, we were told by the mystic that if we take the serpent idol, which we do, which we do have, and returning to its place, which is a damp place, where a serpent might reside, we can get something good, so... So let's... accept the giant hand's generosity. And take these, this fancy new gauntlet. The gauntlet of the line of kings. Apparently we know that this is the Temple of Astrid, that's what it's called. And apparently our magical hammer is a dwarven hammer. <laughs> That's a classy way to exit this place. Which we will never be coming back to because there's nothing else to do here. So let us retrace our steps, heading to the left now. See if we can't uh, explore the rest of these woods. Hmm. I forget. We might have what we need to explore the mountains, but I don't know. Wouldn't count on it. I don't remember the order in which you need to explore these areas, to be perfectly honest with you, but. Going with the forest first. You might notice the danger theme just out of playing. Because we have a rhino priest here. Which is apparently immediately identifiable as a bandit. Well, if it isn't another unfortunate traveler, give me your goal and I won't kill you. Mm. Yeah, we he's after our gold, but can be a nice guy and give him the gold, we should have still one piece, yeah. No, not that, Jesus Christ. And that's it. We can just walk past him now. But let's be a cheapskate as we always are around. Oops. And yeah, the only way he can kill us actually is if we stand by his immediately at the side of him. He kills us pretty quickly. But, if we make the wonderful move of being under him, he just stands there as we punch him into oblivion. More like gently tapping his ribs, judging by the sound, but... 
But now that we've made it here, we are at this big tree house. Someone clearly does live inside this tree. So let's check it out. Oh boy, it's Professor Toad. No bit of sage. We got a sage with many lovely household items, including apparently a directing chair. And if we talk to him. Hello, my boy. Hello. I'm the Sage of the Woods, professional problem solver and repository of wisdom. I've been waiting all day for a courier to deliver a magic box, which my friend Leo in the city has been positively stymied by. Yep, so he's been waiting for the magic box, which we have actually. We are the ones who agreed to deliver it. Uh, should be here, here it is. Something strange inside it, apparently. But we were told to deliver it, so let's go. Oh wait, he drops it and... This guy comes out. Who then punches out the frog and... Well, that didn't go quite as planned, I don't think. So let's try that one more time. This time, though, let's go ahead and take care of this guy. Yep, now the frog isn't dead, which means he can give us a note. How do we take it back to the other guy to get paid? So the guy gave the uh, the frog a box that would kill him. That's a bit weird, but uh, you know we already got everything we need from the guy, so. So we can do the job ourselves, and he will never know the difference. Yep. If Eric wasn't a prince on a quest to save the kingdom, he could totally be a professional hitman. No one ever suspects him. So that's pretty much it for that stretch of the world. Hmm. Is this a marker of the road? Rocks and boulders. Okay, wait. I don't think there's anything we can do over there just yet, but let me confirm it real quick. <laughs> yep, my hands have been covered with the blood of innocence. But that's alright because no one in the history books will write that down. Yeah, this is the marsh. I guess I might as well show this off now. Because we can sort of go into the depths of the swamp, but as long as you see that sort of... I forget what those things are called. Uh, those dinosaurs. That have the things sticking out from the back of their heads, but... What's your signal to not go any further because you will get swallowed up by the swamp. So let's not go there yet. But yeah, if we go down here instead, we will find out that uh, we're back in the town. Uh, but I... Okay, wait a moment. I don't... I think we might have done things slightly out of order. Let me consult my handy reference thingy. For just a moment... Doing things out of order, as I thought. I don't think. Even though there is one thing that I think we're missing. Just a moment. Oops. Oh, 
Okay, never mind. We did miss something, my bad. Well, guess what? It's what time it is. Everyone. It's time to backtrack because I missed something, which, you know, to my credit was kind of difficult to see against the background. So, to have another wonderful stroll through the land of Shadowgate Kaltorn, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing to do with the geography of this place. Because apparently it's divided into a bunch of lands. According to a map at the end of the, um, the first game. Yep. This thing, this grey lump of pixels, this is a gem, and we need it. So having acquired that, let's go ahead and leave this place. And return to the village. The town, that is. The one that wasn't destroyed by the aliens. But yeah, as I was saying, there's like a bunch of different lands in the world of Shadowgate, apparently. I might as well put that up now. Since, you know, oh fuck. Oh jeez. Thanks for suddenly going full screen, chat window, but... Apparently there's a Westland, which is where Jer came from. There's Carl Tolin in the east. Oh, I think, or the south, I don't know. Just as tall in on that map. And Shadowgate is apparently on the southeast, I don't know. And Stormhaven, where the king lives in the first Shadowgate, is in the north. Look, I don't know, I don't pretend to know, but. But at any rate, we're back here. We can get more gold and finish all of our shopping. Okay, wait, if we go left here, can we even do that? Yes, we can. Have we been here yet? No, I don't think we have been to this street, particularly. Can look at this, guys. Townsperson out for a walk. A young boy at play with a yo yo? I don't know. Maybe just a thing she's shaking around. We go into this place. Yeah, we need to talk to a couple of people here. In these cozy offices, we can talk to the chemist. Hello. Just working with mortar and pestle here. Thought the smithy might need a poultice for his foot. Dropped a set of hot tongs on it. Of course, he was flustered by the news about his relatives in the village. That's how he did it. <laughs> he got word that the village was attacked and that smithy left in such a hurry that he left his tools outside. Said anybody could have them. He wasn't sure when he was coming back. Uh, they're right outside there. I think I'll just finish this poultice mixture anyway. You never know when somebody might need it. <laughs> well, have a pleasant day and goodbye. Yeah, so free tools. Thanks to the guy that left because he was worried about his family, which was in the village that was destroyed by the aliens. So, yeah. Nice. Set of tools. Yoink. No, I said you like. I can't really get confused at the what button to press to do things. That's kind of a thing in this game, but. We also have this Chancellor's office. Seems like a place to visit. With the, the elderly man with a failing health and apparently falling asleep on the job, too. Uh, oh, I recognize you, my prince. Although you're grown now and look very like your father, our beloved king. Ah, Prince Eric, things are bad in the kingdom, very bad. Belazar's evil has changed this kind and peaceful land into a fearful place. I've heard a rumor that he has taken your sister, my prince. Since his henchmen lurk everywhere, no one had the courage to follow. I now have more than my father's death to avenge. We already knew that he had taken your sister, dude. Yeah, but apparently everyone is scared of Belazar, so no one's going to follow him. Notice how Belazar is 
almost exactly the same as Belsa was the evil wizard in Shadowgate 64. Oops. I'm gonna public well, got a house which is locked, a barrel for rainwater. Another empty screen, that's always nice. And we end up here, that's how we traverse the town. So let's see, if we go to the curiosity shop here, we finished our task of delivering the, the thing to the sage, so. So, money, please. Ha! That sage has the gift. Gives me little tips on the horses now and again. Always win, too. Here's some gold for your trouble, like I promised. Yeah, the, the sage, I don't think he's gonna be able to give you tips anymore. You know, just, just saying. But at any rate, we got the gold. And there's a bit more we can get from this part of town. If we return to the gem merchant shop, because we did get another nice sapphire with one P, and we can exchange for another couple of gold coins. Now that's not a bad one, not bad at all. Here's some shiny new gold for it. Yep, shiny new gold. Goodbye. Which we can use for something else I just opened up in town, I think. So let us go ahead and continue with our quest. The pack beast is still there. Guess that little girl just isn't coming back for it. Castle still there again, but I think the demon is still guarding it. Hello. And now there's a couple of places here that should be open. The leather shop, you know, <laughs> that's always kind of closed, but the pet shop should now be accessible. Yeah. Monkeys. Well, oh boy. It's a monkey in a barrel. How appropriate. An owner, a snail. The cruelty of cockroach abuse. Yeah, that's a snail. I don't know what you're talking about. Come an ordinary house plant. Wonder if we could be chuck the plant. And in the shop we've got a mongrel, a piranha, and a bird in a cage. You're certainly welcome in my pet shop. I've got some unusual pets here. Yes, indeed. Something for everybody. You can buy anything but the monkey in the barrel. He just loves popping in and out of that barrel when he hears a customer. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. No, so we can buy everything else in here. And let's first the dog. That's Max, man's best friend. You knew I was going to say that, right? But it's true, especially retrievers. You can count on them through thick and thin. Real people dogs. The thing about retrievers is they always come back. Just to show you I'm a nice guy, I'll give you Max for one gold coin, a bargain. <laughs> so yeah, now we own the dog. And off he goes. Don't know who opened the door for him, but the dog is now running around on his own. We can buy the piranha. Now, that's a piranha. Ever hear of those? Well, by golly, those little jiggers can eat your arm in seconds. Eat your whole body before you know it. Don't want to go putting your hand in that water. Just for you, a special price. One gold coin. <coughs> Don't know if you could tell anything if you if the price was anything higher than one gold coin, but... Yeah, we now are the proud owners of a piranha. Which we can't use in ourselves. And we can buy the bird as well. The bird as well, please. 
A canary. Now, that's a pet that everybody can enjoy. Just listen to the sweet sound it makes. Doesn't eat much either. A very economical pet. And for you, one gold coin, Elbire. Elbire. Yep, here's a gold. So we bought this guy out as well. So we now proudly own a piranha, a canary, and supposedly a dog, even though he ran off. I'm sure we'll be glad we bought him, though. Hmm. Let's probably check on this thing now. Of, of course, it's only one message that... That... I... Didn't... Think... What's only one message? Well... Well, at any rate... Sorry about that everyone, but an ex parrot, I don't know. <laughs> don't know how it could be, but But now that we have purchased all of our pets Let's try the swamp again. Clearly We now hold the stoutness, the bravery to cross the swamp without getting hurt, right? Yep, that sloshing sound, so reassuring. There's that dinosaur again in the background. But, nope, we're still sinking. Except this time, the dog comes out and saves us. And then runs away again. That dog just can't stay in one place, huh? And we have ended up in this place with the... Uh, Giant and frightful creature, the dragon bones, which still have an eyeball in them, and also a sword. With powerful magic to have killed such a creature. Oh boy. Nope. Oh, poor god. Yeah, I didn't remember that that happened. Actually, but. No, I don't think the dino kills us. So, because I didn't remember that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this from this point because I didn't remember to save right before that. Unfortunately, the dino does stay in the background. Maybe we can face off against the uh, Dilophosaurus right now. Aren't the Dilophosaurus the ones that. Uh, the ones with, like, flaps that. They that they're on their faces and that they uh, sort of deploy when they spit poison in the eyes of people. If, you know, if I recall, if I remember anything from reading reading Jurassic Park, it said that the Lophosaurus is apparently that. Hello, well, this is done yourself. Hello, yeah, you can't just grab it with the uh, with the gauntlet itself. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, but now the proud owner of a lightsaber? Well, I don't know. And if we try to go back, we will still sink, but... Once again, the dog comes to our rescue. Ain't that a nice dog? And even though we have the sword now, we will still punch the shit out of everything. We still have the Fist of the North Star. And we will use it. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I get stuck on that screen for no reason, but not this time. To weed out the evildoers. But for now, we must return to the Dwarven Mines. Wherein we will find the next things we need to continue our quest. Th 
found the cat. I wish I could relate to that, but let me see. Here's the yeah, the daughter. Oh, we can move this around. I didn't realize that until now. Well, that's something. Yeah, we can't go into the winch house. I've already been schooled. We can, however, go back into the boiler room. Let me see. Yeah. Boiler is cold, but if we use our tools that we lifted from the uh, the uh, blacksmith shop on the boiler. Well, we will be able to dig out something, namely this golden orb. So what's that for, anyway? It's just the orb from the engine room, we don't know what it does. And why would we? So let's... this time we are prepared to face the dangers of the mountain, I think. Oops. The frosty mountain heights. I like the fact that unlike, say, King's Quest, you can't just walk off the edge like a moron. It does keep you from doing that, so that's something. So, this side of the ledge, with ice flows on it, Seems to be nothing except this cave at the left. How do we head, in, head into the cave? Let me see. Clearly, there's only good things to be found in here. It seems like a very friendly place, it does. No, we're in a giant slug borrow. Wonder if we'll run into a giant slugs anytime soon. Let's see. Yep, there they are. You might notice too there. They have a bunch of spikes on them, but. Oh boy. Yep, I, th I forget about that. Well, this is going so well. Oh, apparently, though, they are incompetent enough that we can just sort of muddle around until we found a good spot to punch them in. And for our troubles, we got a shiny piece of metal. Tube nests. Yeah, there's nothing else in here though, just a couple of slugs. With spikes on their backs that take a long time to kill a person, apparently. Hmm. Also notice the shape of this thing, I guess. Looks kind of like an item in the first shadow gate, but won't spoil what that is just yet. So, having conquered the slug cave, let us witness as Eric continues his ascent of the mountain. Parasaurol offers, yes. That might be it, actually. I think I saw another name for it, but. Uh, but let me see. Let me compare this other name that I saw to... To the Parasaurol Office. See, yeah, I think Parasaurol Office is right, because the other are... Uh, dinosaur. That I saw mentioned that looked like that was the Hadrosaur, but... But the Hadrosaurs are, uh, in fact, quadrupeds. And to be fair, the somewhat parasaurol officers are too, it looks like, but... But it was far less often that they would use their four legs. Because they would stand on two legs most of the time, it seems. Yeah, that's about right. And they had that thing... They had sort of that duck build appearance. And that kind of a horn coming out of the, the back of their head, so yeah, that seems about right. But back to the grind we go. Let's do the same thing as before and go left in the fork in the road. Hello? Ooh, 
Which leads us to, apparently, a dead end. A dead end. There we go. <laughs> or it would be, if not for that little crevice in the back wall. Which we can go into. Oh, but I forgot there's something in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and then go into it. Yep. You might be... This might seem familiar. But fortunately we can't see the uh, the thing that's shooting those skulls at us already. And we can take a few of them before we die, which means we can we don't have to duck all the way. We can just go ahead and cross the skull cannon, which leaves us in this place with the uh, tomb, the sarcophagus of royalty. And two skeletons by the side. And I... oh boy. You know, figure out it now. I don't know how we're supposed to know to, how to do this without having played the first Shadow Gate, because... We're told to assemble the Stuff of Ages, I guess, like Jer did in the first game. Hello? Uh... And the way he did that was by taking a staff and putting on the golden thorn and the silver orb onto it, which now is a golden orb, I think. Yep. Except that was the wrong skeleton. I also don't know how you're supposed to know why that is, but... But if you do that in the right skeleton, you just die. So yeah, I guess... We need to follow the amazing Shadowgate logic to... Assemble this thing. Look at the stuff. Put the thing that's shaped like the golden thorn onto it. Put the thing that looks like the silver orb onto it. And now... We are the proud owner of one Stuff of Ages, which shrinks, apparently. I didn't notice that before. To fit in our inventory. <laughs> the Wand of Ages, more like. I don't know. So now we have one... actually we have all three uh, items that are integral in the very last part of the game. The last thing we need to do in this game, but... We'll get to that soon enough. Pretty sure I'm already done with more than half the game anyway. And if I recall, there's only one other thing that we can do in this mountain area anyway. Yep. Made it to the top where this place lies. The hut of Lakmir the Wizard. That asshole who revealed that he was a complete shitlord back in Shadowgate 64, but... Yeah, this is a fairly short game, like the first Shadowgate. Okay, not that short, but still fairly short. Uh, not, not really much else to be seen here, though. If we examine the parchment... It's, it's just paper, huh? Well, well, let's head inside. I'm sure this guy's gonna be friendly. Oh, wait. Nope. That ice guy froze us. So how do we prevent that from happening? Well... I don't know, I guess because of how slow the game was, really. It wasn't that long, though. It was only like four or five hours, if you know what you're doing. Which is what, how much it took me, took me to get through it. So we got the Pennant of the Elements, you might recall, that we got way back when. So if we put this on, we are now protected from the Wraith's spell. It's Wraith from the Netherworld. And on the right we have Lakmir himself. 
frozen solid. Ah, no fire. This whole place is, in fact, frozen solid. We can't see that. Not from the outside, but yes, from the inside. But we also have a magnifying glass. Can you guess how we're gonna thaw this place? Well, we got this parchment that was hand handily lying outside the Lackmer's hut. Put it on the ground here where this one ray of sunlight reaches. Oops. No, not that. And now we use a magnifying glass to set that on fire. And apparently that's enough to kill the wraith. And immediately restore everything. So now Lackmer is back in his good spirits. I wonder if any of his, any of his old powers are still there. By the great seal, it's young Eric. If you hadn't come along, my boy, I might have been frozen for eternity. But listen well to me. That pendant of the elements you wear is a mirror image of a flaw in Castle Shadowgate. You must find that room and solve the puzzle engraved in the floor. Moreover, in a nearby place, one of your royal ancestors hid the Staff of Ages. But the pieces have become scattered over the years. If you can find the pieces and put them together, you'll have the means to defeat the Warlock Lord. May the spirit of your father and your ancestors stay with you, my boy. Yeah, no one else has talked about the Warlock Lord so far, though. So I don't know why, what would lead you to think that we're gonna have to kill him, but... We can swipe this seashell off of Lackmere's place and deliver what's onto him. What he deserves, but if we do that, he just saps us into ashes. God damn it. I really would have liked to kill him, but I guess that's not happening. Let's leave this place. Yeah, we've already got the Staff of Ages too. And I guess that's pretty much the only clue we get to that. We need to get the stuff of ages from this area. But I still don't know how we're supposed to guess that we assemble it on the left skeleton instead of the right. Maybe it's because it's right-handed? I don't know. That'd be a pretty shitty way of determining what to do if that's the case, but I don't know. I don't really care anymore since I'm done with this area. So let's step away from the frozen mountain. I think we have all we need to conquer the last area of the game now, actually. Which is where, where we will be going next, I believe. If we return to this place, the path where the fairy guy warped us, and this time begin our ascent of this mountain with new and exciting perils awaiting. Oh boy. Two beautiful backgrounds there. And apparently tragedy striking. Ooh, we could have been crushed by the boulder. Actually I think we will be. Because that merits showing off, just like every other death in this game. If we just stand here, if we just stand here, oh boy, we're crushed and our eyeballs literally pop off and bounce on the ground. I think we need to show that one more time. Yep, there they are. But that's not the only way we can die. So please not do that anymore. Well, I don't know how I dodged that the first time, but... Hello? There we go. Why do we also have this Guardian of the Mountain? Which totally isn't a Naga man. He, you know, leisurely swings his little sling at us. His... Oops, I might as well let that play out again. Even though we already are hearing the music. The Grim Reaper's theme. 
but need to see Space Reaper in his full glory. We can, however, use our Fist of the North Star to just not give him any time to attack and just get past him. Oh boy. And over here we have a harpy which, which chops our head off. Similar to a headwind. Yep, obviously the way we deal with this is just ducking all the time. Because it just can't fly low enough to get us hundred ducking. Oh, I was gonna say this place seems peaceful, doesn't it? But it also has falling rocks. But we've already seen that death, so Oh boy, do you see what I see? It's Castle Shadowgate. A feeling of apprehension and foreboding. So it's time for the final area of the game to begin, but first... Let's check out these statues, like the Owl statue. Maybe we can speak to them? What save you in this darkest hour? I think it in the fairies' power. The pipes that call the fairies nigh, their tones resounding in the sky. The pipes may have the power to save, should death confront the young and brave. The pipes might save us, well, I don't know. Something to keep in mind, I guess. And this woman here, this fairy statue. For victory by a royal heir, sword and gauntlet must you bear, or staff of ages now made whole will shield you from the well of souls. But first most basic earth finds use to solve that which would air confuse. The elements represented there are earth, water, fire, and air. <laughs> what is a plot, Will? Well, adventure games. Also, we're like the hair <coughs> to the throne of this place, but... The evil chancellor wants to kill us. So we've embarked on a quest to escape from the dungeon and try to get to him. And now we're here. The end of the story. No. So we got a few statues. Apparently the, the creators of this were proud enough of them that they gave each of them a separate description. And over on this screen we have more statues and this thing. Which, if we look at, it's an undead monster with its lower half misplaced. Yep, <laughs> nice legs. But it will easily kill us. So what we have to do instead is just keep punching it, as we always do. Maybe, but the difference is we have to punch out its legs first. And now, after much fisting of the North Star, it sure takes a while, but but we do manage to conquer that guy. And here we get a statue of a stone leviathan. A demonic creature with bat wings. A hunchbacked henchman. We get Modok. But apparently its name is the Shadow Snatcher. Well, I don't know, it looks like Modok to me. And a human centipede. Nope, it's a monster derived from a scorpion. Are those pincers? I don't know, they look kind of small, but. But we also get a giant bug with apparently. Yep. Mandibles. And now we have this. This room. That we were told about by the wizard. The floor which denotes the four elements water, earth, air, and fire. So the way we solve this puzzle is by. 
providing elements which or items which correspond to the elements. And we actually have a few alternatives for this. Uh, we can... Let me see. For water we can either use the piranha or something else, the seashell, I think. But since we love our pets, we'll be using the seashell. For us... We can either use... Actually, we can only use, I think, one item. And that would be the quartz. For air, we can either use the canary or the feather from the pelican. And for fire, we can only use the piece of coal that we got from the, the boiler room. So, having solved the puzzle of the elements, we now are propelled into this next section with a big organ in it. Let's see. And over on the left here we have some sealed scrolls, so let's get them all, why not? Get all of them, please. Get all of the sealed scrolls. They're clearly integral to our completion of this quest, guy. Clearly, they're going to come in very handy. And now we walk towards the organ. And examine it too. It contains various slots, it seems. Because oversized keys made of marble or ebony, but it hasn't been used in quite some time. Apparently it has carvings that are somewhat gargoyle-like, but what we need to focus on right now is the slots. Because if we use our scrolls on them, we will get something. Try the blue one. We get teleported to the outside of the castle, I guess. That's for if we missed anything that we need to go back for, but we didn't, so let's not do that. If we use a green scroll... Oh god. Well, something plays, but I can't quite hear it against the other music. Let's turn that off for a moment, so that we can actually hear that. Eerie. Well, yeah, let's restore the organ theme. Why not? Let's try the red scroll. We get sucked into the organ and die. So let's not try the red scroll. Let's instead try the yellow scroll. Which causes the appearance of this ghost lady with which we dance. Looks pretty nice, huh? Except now we have a beard. And now we have no hair, and now... We're just silhouettes, and... Yeah, that's another death. At least it was nice. So, yeah. Pretty much no use for the scrolls right now. Or... Pretty much at all, if... Uh, unless, well, there's no way to backtrack from here without the, uh, that one scroll, so... So maybe there might be. Pictures of past occupants. Yeah, I don't remember this, this game, this room from the first Shadowgate game. And the door leading deeper into the castle. Where apparently an elephant man is hiding. Strong enough to splat us into the wall with the force of the door. So how do we deal with an elephant man? Well, obviously. We still have the squeak toy left over, so... So let's not close the inventory. Uh, hello? How do we use this? 
Oh, here we go. Yeah, which scares the elephant man away. And now we can go forward. Into the clock tower. This I definitely don't remember. And nothing else to be seen except the fact that this room apparently leads to a clock tower above. Look at that climbing. Oh boy, this music though. Oh, I look at the bats from the caves again. I'm a bat, I'm a bat. Also, a hole in the ground, I notice. Giant numerals face or cast shadows on the floor. Counterweight and a chain. Uh, let's just walk into the hole. Yeah, a bit overbearing that depth. Let's instead grab onto this chain here. And now we can get down without getting splitted. Yeah, this doesn't look like that other place that we were at. Now we're in this part of the game, this kind of the big split at the end. We can have things happen a number of ways. But we're in the Well of Souls, apparently. The void between the worlds, inside the castle. And a brass gong, again reminiscent of where I used the gong to summon the ferryman. So let's ring the gong with the hammer or not. No, the way we ring the gong is the old-fashioned way. Which summons this guy. Before you may cross, you must choose one. And only one thing to bring with you. Choose it now. Yep, we can only bring one of our items along for the trip. This is Karen the Ferryman, yes. And this is his ferry. So let's... can we speak to him further? No, we cannot. So obviously we're gonna need this, uh, this phrase book, right? Obviously. So let's take that with us and see where that leads us. Yep, going across the void of space here with the ferryman. Wonder what could possibly be across. Wonder if I'll regret this journey. Oh look, it's the guy who threw us in the dungeon. Are we gonna acknowledge him? Well, not in time, apparently. He just zaps us, and now... Aha! So our young hero has finally awakened, eh? For a moment I feared you would sleep through my final triumph over your pathetic race. <sighs> Belazar! Why, Belazar, why? Why did you betray my father? He trusted you! <laughs> yes, the poor old fool. He offered me everything a man could want. But I'm not a man! Oh boy. Oh, well, not quite what I was expecting, but... Now, young prince, I have the power of Shadowgate at my disposal. Your sister's life will seal the bargain which shall return the Warlock Lord to this world. <gasps> Elizabeth, oh, the Warlock no, Lord, what a shocker. Belazar, you can't do this. She's just a child. What is another human to me, boy? Besides, when I return this world to its rightful reptilian masters, the magnitude of the slaughter will make this small sacrifice seem pale by comparison. Oh, really well. Oh, silly me, bonum belly no. dominus forbiscum. No, no. Oh, sed etiotis domino. No. He says, ne ho hopus cum musis deditus no. non sin nosco. Awake, O oh Lord. Of you forgot Abraxas. No. That's kind of a, Arise, an important world for magic in this universe. Can't have a magic spell without Abraxas. Yep, there's the Warlock Lord. Looking a little bit different. 
Devour the girl child, warlock lord, and consume her soul. With your power, I will conquer this world. Oh, I'll um. devour the child in due time, changeling, but first. Yep, but first. No, no. Get wrecked. <laughs> Best now, plan. My child, I'll devour you body and soul, and the blood of the line of kings will set me free from this accursed exile. And your brother will make a fine meal as well. With both your souls a part of me, my power will be indomitable. It's always nice to the summon snake demons with Cowboy. All of those who would oppose me shall be ground into the dust. In fire and agony, a new age will begin. The age of the Warlock Lord. So apparently the Warlock Lord invented airships, now, so child, he founded the Kingdom of Baron with my in time for Final kingdom. Fantasy IV. Top oh, don't look so frightened. It will only hurt forever. <laughs> Can't wait till the Warlock Lord decides to steal some magicite. Oh, here's this guy again. The doorway between our worlds is closed to me now. Avenge me and save all you hold precious. Ah, yep, let's do it. That's right, Warlock Lord. It's time to end this madness once and for all. Oh, and just how do you intend to foil my plans, little hero? With this. Yep, this phrase book. Excuse me. Are you crazy? I'm about to begin the climactic battle between good and evil with the fate of the universe riding on the outcome and you give me nothing to do it with but a lousy... Ah! Hey, if you don't know how to use a power of language, that's your own problem, guy. So yeah, the phrasebook might not have been the best thing to give him. And he wasn't savvy enough to use his Hokuto no uh, fighting skills. So let's back up to this part and take something else with us this time, like uh, like a handy dandy magic sword. Seems like a yep, a special sword that we found in the swamp. Except that, you know we would have to watch this all over again, but. But fortunately I found a speed up button in the, in the emulator, so we're, we're gonna watch this a bit faster now. Yeah, yeah. You're the evil chancellor who betrayed the king because you're actually a snake man. You know, it's an age old story. And now you want to summon a giant snake demon to conquer the world, whom you can't control because you have no insurance over him. That's a great plan, it always works. It never goes badly. Yep, there he comes again. <laughs> I like how you can sort of hear the difference in intonations, even when they're speaking like squirrels. He lights. Like, this guy's voice is slightly deeper than the other guy's. That's how you know he means business. Yeah, there's his airship again. And this guy's still speaking very quietly, though. But here we go. That's right, Warlock Lord. It's time to end this madness once and for all. Oh, and just how do you intend to foil my plans, little hero? Yep. With this. But this time, he's got his lightsaber, which which chops up the Warlock Lord into bits. And then They're we get the ending cutscene. Again. You know what? The world safe once more. I'll tell you what, it's exactly the same every time, so we're just gonna go through all the endings and then watch it after the last one, because that's one uh, way we can beat the guy. The other way is with the Staff of Ages. So yeah, let's... yeah, we can't skip the cutscene though, I don't think. If I press the start or... The equivalent of the start button, it doesn't really do anything. Okay, just 
definitely in cutscene so mode now. Hero. Pressing buttons and buttons do nothing. So good job, people who made this game. Yep, I know. Look, I would just be repeating myself as I, if I tried to riff over this, so... So I don't know. I guess I'm really kind of try, kind of, kind of trying to remember if there was a Doctor Who monster that looked like any of these guys, because that's kind of what this is reminding me of now. But it's fairly cheesy designs. Hey, I'm gonna send my minions to destroy the village of Mist. You better watch out. It's gonna be horrible. Okay, here we go again. Ah, uh, let's skip it again. To foil my plans, little hero. Except, yeah. Yeah. now we got this handy dandy staff. With which we can pop a bunch of holes in his body and cause his dissolution into a skeleton. Their father avenged and the yeah, the father was avenged, but... But neither of those are the canon endings, I don't think. What we need to do instead to beat the evil warlock lord is... Is go across with a very special item. So, bear witness as for the last time at least. We cross the void, we get into the world of souls, we get sampled by the guy and we get monologued about how he wants to conquer the world. In squirrel mode. The only true way of witnessing this. Yeah, really, who needs to? Who needs Guardians of the Galaxy when we have stuff like this? this is top-notch storytelling and world-building. And these are the best quirky characters that no one ever expected to see in a film, brought to life. You know, who needs Thanos when you have the Warlock Lord? Who needs uh, Star-Lord when we have a very charismatic Fist of the North Star and Shiro slash Eric? Who needs the Dark Aster when we have Kefka's airship? The okay, we're nearing the end again. Okay, time for the canon ending now. That's right, Warlock Lord. It's time to end this madness once and for all. Oh, and just how do you intend to foil my plans, little hero? With this. Yep. <laughs> and that defeats the Warlock Lord. Their father avenged and the world safe once more. Eric and Elizabeth race to the surface, leaving behind the Well of Souls and the vanquished Warlock Lord. They reached the open air just as the wizard Lachmir, freed from Balazar's imprisoning spell, unleashed all the sorcerous powers at his disposal, hurling spell after spell at Castle Shadowgate. Yep, so... The skies boiled, the mountains shook, and mystic energies crackled in the air. The earth below the castle gave forth thousands upon thousands of thorn-encrusted vines which slid like serpents up the rough brick walls of the ancient castle, weaving a deadly wall of green around Shadowgate. Finally, after the last brick disappeared into the living wall of thorns, each vine gave forth a single red rose. The spell was complete, and Shadowgate was sealed forever. So I guess that's it for the Castle Shadowgate, it's never coming back. With the death of Balazar and the defeat of the Warlock Lord, the soldiers who had remained loyal to Erond came out of hiding and took up arms against the hideous creatures Balazar had summoned to terrorize the land. Led by the Prince and Princess, they destroyed the last of Balazar's monstrous allies, and the land was at last at peace. So everything ends well, I suppose. The countryside safe once more. Eric and Elizabeth took their rightful places on the throne. 
and side by side they ruled the land. The task of undoing the damage Balazar's schemes had wrought was a long and difficult one, but Eric and Elizabeth soon proved themselves to be fair and wise rulers, and justice was restored. Yeah, dual monarchies always work. Inheritors of their father's wisdom and benevolence, the two were quick to restore Kaltorlan to its former glory. And under their enlightened rule, the people prospered. For ages afterwards, scholars and historians would tell of the mighty empire forged by the dual monarchy of Eric and Elizabeth, and bards would sing of their adventures. The line of kings was at last restored, and would forevermore stand guard over Shadowgate. Even though Shadowgate is pretty much gone forever. But yeah, this is... Uh, Icom Simulation, which became Viacom Media? I don't know. I thought it was Chemco, but... I don't know, this... Yeah, these people... Uh, I forget. Uh, but the same people, the ones who designed all of the Shadowgate games for it, or... Uh, uh, is this a different batch? I don't know. Apparently though we have Lil Gangster to thank for the background paintings. You know, step aside Banksy, we got Lil Gangster to... ...to tout and boast his amazing artwork. Now. And just like that, the game ends after like 30 or 20 seconds even of credits. Also, this little title screen, now that I notice, kind of doesn't really match any point in the game, since, you know, the, the uh, last guy, the Warlock Lord, doesn't really have hands, so I guess he's supposed to be the guy from the first game, I don't know. So, uh, fuck, what other save states do I have? Do I have anything worthwhile in the save states? I don't think I do, now. So yeah, that was Beyond Shadowgate, the last of the, well the second really, but the last of the classic Shadowgates that I played. But, uh, you know, next stream, I guess tomorrow, I guess I'll be doing the Shadowgate remake on Master Difficulty at that, so that's, once I'm done with that though, that's gonna be it for Shadowgate's Athon, or whatever I'm calling it. But for now, I guess it's time to move on to something else.